If I look at what errors are in, in science, in, in physical sciences, then there's a whole range of different um, topics that can be linked in with errors, starting with the standard error bars and uncertainties of a measurement that are crucial in understanding what a measurement means, to honest errors, and I'll say what I mean by that afterwards, to delusion, sloppiness, failure, crackpot theories, and, of course, outright fraud. And I'm going to give a few examples for each of these. Error bars are basically defining how well you know a measurement, how well you've measured something. If you give a number, you have to know how uncertain this number is. Otherwise, um, well, you're talking about fish stories. How big is a fish that you've just caught? This is an important aspect of science. Without error bars, without errors, without uncertainties, measurements make no sense whatsoever. But these error bars, only tell half of the story, because if you look at the historical evolution of some of these error bars, the measurements that they represent should always be the same thing. This is one of the founding myths of science, that you're measuring the same thing again and again and again, and the same answer comes out each time. Well, if you look at the evolution of these two measurements over decades, you'll see that this doesn't actually correspond to reality. In reality, there are differences. You measure something differently than the previous experiment. You get a different result. And that's, of course, going to mean that the results that come out are different. But it's worse than that, because if you look at these curves, you actually see that there's a pernicious effect. When people measure something, they always refer themselves to the previous groups. And they're biased in what they're measuring by what the others have measured before. And so the average value that they're measuring sort of creeps away over time. You don't have a pure measurement. You always have a measurement that has to contain the history of everything that's been done before. And of course, that's even assuming you're doing things right, but you can do things sloppily. A lot of scientists work as precisely as they can. Others, maybe not quite as precisely. And so you end up making mistakes. And there's a number of errors that have been made in science that have not led to something new, but that are just simply wrong. Uh, there are just two beautiful examples, N-rays, which were discovered at the time of the discovery of X-rays, microwaves, a whole bunch of different new discoveries. And this was yet another set of measurements, which unfortunately could only be seen by French physicists. They're the only ones who were ever able to discover this radiation. Uh, Prosper Blondeau has spent his life and his reputation uh, defending something that actually wasn't there. And the same thing with uh, Nikolai Fedyakin, who discovered a new form of water, polywater, a dense, more viscous form of water, which also turned out to be just lab impurities. Nothing more fundamental than that. Of course, you can also fail, and you can fail horribly. Um, you miss a Nobel Prize, which is sort of the best thing that can possibly happen to a physicist. Uh, the Joliot Curies, the second generation Joliot Curies, had seen a signal that they misunderstood. They believed it to be something different. And another person, Chadwick, reinterpreted those observations correctly this time and got a Nobel Prize for it. He discovered the neutron this way, something that the Joliot Curies missed. Crackpot is also often linked to error. You can try to propose new ideas, propose new ideas like um, the concept of archibacteria, a third type of form of life, which is what Carl Woese did. He proposed a common ancestor to all uh, organisms, um, the archibacteria and the extremophiles, which was considered to be completely wrong by the whole field at that time. And of course, like many cases in the past, he was right. And over time, luckily for him, uh, this was recognized as being a correct model. But there are many other cases where this isn't the case, where a crackpot idea is a crackpot idea, and it doesn't deserve to be pursued further on. And then finally, there's the category of fraud. Mendel is one of the famous scientists in history for having discovered um, the heredity of uh, genetic traits. Well, it turns out that this is a, a, a fairy tale. It's not actually true. His data were incorrect. They were falsified. They were too good to be true. And uh, it turns out that um, probably he had the right idea, but the wrong data, the wrong proof. He falsified his data in order to reach the conclusion that he knew was right and that turned out to be right as well. And I'd like to give a few examples of other errors that are 
perhaps known, perhaps less well known, in different areas. Uh, cold fusion was discovered to great fanfare in the 1970s. Uh, chemists managing at room temperature to fuse atoms of hydrogen and to generate energy. A Vulcan, a planet that is invented, predicted to exist very close to the sun to explain why Mercury's orbit didn't behave according to Newtonian gravity. Mars canals on Mars, seen through telescopes, and the theory of continental drift by Wegener. And all of these are errors. Uh, cold fusion was a measurement error. Vulcan was a hypothesis error, an error in what was actually assumed to be correct. Mars canals are an observational error, and continental er drift is an error in explanation. The model was correct, but the explanation that he gave was incorrect, and that led to him not being taken seriously. So we're going to go well beyond science and art today in the topics we're going to discover. Uh, so we're going to look for a landscape, a map. And when you're heading out to new territories, it's always good to have a map. And the worse your map is, the more interesting the landscape you discover. Uh, if you're going to discover the continent of the Americas, it's great to have a map that tells you that on the way to Japan, there's an island called Antilla, where you can refurnish yourself with water and food, and that Japan is actually much closer than you could have known at that time. And on the way, you're going to discover something completely unexpected. So errors lead to two things. You can have success, and you can have failure. And we're going to talk about failure as well. And before giving the mic to Hiroshi, uh, to, to uh, uh, Hitoshi, Hiroshi, yes, I got it right, sorry. Uh, um, I'd like to leave a quote with you, which is a motivator for why we're doing things. As scientists, we're always trying to go beyond what we know, and we're always running the risk of failure. So I want to leave this statement with you um, before passing the mic to them. 